Welcome to BricsCAD Pro for 3D design verification. During this breakout, we are analyzing a data set from a specialist scaffolding contractor. They have been tasked with designing and assembling a scaffolding platform around a submarine that's in dry dock for routine maintenance. So what are we looking to solve? We will highlight how BricsCAD V26 helps visualize design problems in the 3D environment. With imported files sent to a specialist contractor, and by optimizing and editing the data, we will remove any design issues that will impact production and installation. The optimized scaffolding installations need to be safe, easy to analyze, simple to install, and all within the customer's budget. In today's breakout, we're going to be looking at two of the four main areas of the BricsCAD Pro workflow for general design. First of all, we're going to look at the import and creation of data, but also how to optimize and edit the design files. In later breakouts, we'll be addressing the detail and annotation part of BricsCAD and where we excel, and also the print and publishing area. So why not check out the rest of the breakouts after this session? So what are we going to learn during this breakout? I'm going to highlight 12 of the new or enhanced features within BricsCAD V26 and show how these can fit within a customer's production workflow. In BricsCAD V26, we've enhanced the workspace selection box. On starting the application, you'll notice now you can pick your workspace based on your license level. And you get a highlight on the thumbnail preview to show you the workspace that you're picking. And here I'm going to select the 2D drafting workspace to start with. On launching the application through the new workspace selection box, at the top left-hand corner, we can log in to our BricsCAD account using a single uniform login process that enables us to access our BricsCAD account which contains details of our software licenses and service requests. A large part of the routine maintenance schedule for this vessel is the removal and reapplication of approved paint coatings to the submarine hull. The Ministry of Defence issues guidelines on this and the customer has attached the PDF into the DWG file. When I double click and open it, it opens the specification in its own viewer. While I was away, my colleague decided to reorder some of the folders on the network. And when I open this file, I can see that the link is now broken. In BricsCAD V26, we've made great improvements onto the notification dialog box, where you get a single concise messaging type for all in-application messages and warnings. I can try and reload the document, but if I still can't find it, I can browse and reattach the document into the DWG file. In BricsCAD V26, to offer parity to other DWG-based CAD platforms, we've now got the option of changing the dimension units in the file through the command line using the DWG units command. I've received this data set from a company in the US, so typically the dimension types will be an imperial. So what I've done, I've just got a saved view of the foot section, and I'm just going to take some quick measurements off it. And on the properties tab on the right-hand side, I've got a pretty good idea that the dimensions are in Imperial. I'm just going to double check through the Drawing Explorer to check the unit types are currently in inches, which they are. So what I want to do is change this. On the command line, if you click and type in DWG units, you'll notice now, once I've run the command, you're prompted with a series of questions in terms of numbers and yes or no. What unit types would you like between one to six? So you can type it in and hit return. And then it prompts you with other questions in terms of how the dimensions is, are displayed and also the precision on the screen. And also if you're scaling entities from other drawings that are inserted, do you want them to adopt the unit types? Once you've gone through and answered these questions, then you can specify whether it's going to be within the model space or the paper space or both. And once you've done this, you'll notice if I hit return, it scales the drawing in the background. And when I shut that dialog box, I can just double check by looking at a predefined metric view and taking some dimensions that the drawing dimensions have changed. And you can see visually there they have. But to double check, I'm just going to go back into the Drawing Explorer and check the dimension types. And this makes it really easy to transfer data between teams. In BricsCAD V26, We've made big improvements to the interface of the 3D look from icon. 
Now the enhanced interface makes it much easier to select predefined views, giving the user greater control over positioning the model in the 3D environment and to interrogate the design with the ability to pick corner alignments within the outline cube to recall isometric views. In BricsCAD V26, we've updated the Interference Manager interface. We've made it easier to locate interfering regions between components with the ability of using rules based on component properties. Filters can be applied and saved, giving the user consistency when running verification checks to ensure any component interference is removed during the design process. What I now want to do is check the interference between the wooden footplates and the steel footplates at the bottom of the vertical uprights. So what I'm going to do here in selection set one and selection set two, I'm going to filter based on layer properties. Selection set one, I've added the steel footplate and I'm just going to save this filter so I can recall it at a later date. In selection set two, under general, I'm going to choose layer and I'm now going to put in the wooden footplates as a layer to search against. And once I've accepted this, you'll notice now, if I click on the disk icon, I can save this filter as I did in selection set one, making it very easy to recall the same consistent checks. I'll slide on the calculate interfering volume check. And once I run this, you'll notice in the results tab, four of the feet are intersecting which means I would then need to go and find these and design out any problems. The great thing is it shows the interfering volume and you can choose whether you automatically zoom into the problem area or look at it overall. And you'll notice visually, it's very easy to pick. To make it easier to see the intricate detail of this framework, we've introduced a new section type called Slice. And this enables the user to see the intricate design details with inside a defined boundary. I'm gonna add a section line now and you'll notice here I can change by using the flip grips to reverse the section. And when I click on the line on the properties tab on the right hand side, I can change the section type to slice. And within the properties dialog, I can change the section offset, the section thickness, and it updates instantly in the graphics view and anything within inside that enclosed boundary will get shown in the visible view, making it very easy to identify problems within the design. As part of our continuous products improvement, in BricsCAD V26, we've added the ability to take quick measurements by using the geometry measure command. This enables the user to take measurements of 2D and 3D geometry really quickly. And you can also recall the measurements on the command line. You'll notice here, you can copy and paste it and use it in other documents, but it keeps the X, Y, and Z coordinates based on the dimension properties. So far we've spent a fair bit of time identifying the issues within this design. But what happens when we need to make edits? We can now modify geometric properties of 3D solid primitives within the properties tab. I'm just gonna build a foot section here. You'll notice here, I can just build it up in the graphics view. And when I select the body by using the selection filter, on the right hand side, I can change the length, the width and the height really quickly inside the dialog box. And if I wanted to select just the face only, I can use our newly improved grips to actually modify the primitive visually, making it really quick to make fast design edits. Unique to BricsCAD, the fillet solid command has been added to BricsCAD V26. I now want to make the scaffolding platform safer by deburring the edges of these metal platform sections. By running the fillet command, one of the options you've got is to choose the solid option. And when I select the solid body and type in the radial value that I want to add, it adds a fillet to every single edge of this solid body really quickly. The final command I'm gonna show you is new to BricsCAD V26, is the surface patch command, which enables you to close gaps in mesh bodies. You'll notice here, I've got an open face in this submarine that needs to be patched. So by clicking all the edges individually, I can now select the boundary and it puts a patch right over the top. This brings our breakout to a close and here's a list of the benefits that we've highlighted throughout the session. We hope you've got the confidence to be working with imported data and optimizing it using BricsCAD V26.
Why not check out the rest of our breakouts by scanning the QR code to learn more about how BricsCAD can accelerate your path to production.